So just take a minute to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sound of my voice or whether it'll be to the spaces between my words. And as you begin to comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell you this sleep meditation in the background. It's a sleep meditation about a man heading on a long road trip to the coast. And they're traveling in their car on this long road trip. And they're finding the experience difficult to remain alert as there's so little going on around them. And they haven't seen another car for many, many hours. And around them is just flat land and off in the distance, in one direction, and mountains so far in the distance, you can just see the peaks And looking down this straight road, it just seems to go all the way to the horizon. And then just disappears, as if it could go on forever and ever. And they continue travelling along this road, heading towards the coast. As the sun travels across the sky, they notice the way the sky changes colour as their journey continues. With the beginning of the day having the sky in shades of oranges and reds and pinks, and as the day continues on, so a blueness sets across the sky getting richer and richer, with barely a cloud in the sky. And then as the day begins to draw to an end, so they can notice those reds and oranges creeping back into the sky again, before noticing stars appearing in the sky and an inky blackness setting into that sky. And they drive for a while with that inky black sky, the twinkling stars overhead, unable to see anything around them, before deciding to pull over and just rest for the night. And they take a blanket out of their car. They place that blanket on the bonnet of their car. And they lie back on that blanket, feeling the warmth from the bonnet through the blanket. Gazing up at those stars. Feeling the cool breeze of the evening. watching the occasional shooting star streak across the sky, before heading back into the car, reclining the seat, wrapping that blanket around them, and drifting and floating so peacefully, so comfortably asleep. And the next day, they continue their drive. Until eventually, after many hours of driving, they find themselves arriving at the coast. And they knew they were arriving at the coast before they could see the coast. They could already begin to smell the change in the air 
they could already begin to notice the shift in the temperature. Noticing the shift in the breeze. And they arrived at the coast, parked up their car, and there was nobody here. And they walked down to that coast, down onto the sand. And they could hear the sounds of the waves rolling in across that sand, the sound of those waves, pulling some of that sand back out into the sea. They could see the way the waves rolled in and pulled back out as so they bubbled across the sand. And they took their shoes and socks off and they walked a little way into the water to feel that sea, to feel that water rolling in over their feet and pulling back out again to sea. And this man set up a tent a little way from the shore and slightly up a bank in a sheltered section near that sea up near some of the trees and they cleared a space and they lit a campfire and they settled down into that tent, feeling a sense of peace and calmness. But finally, having reached here, and they had themselves something to eat relaxed back in that tent and started reading a book. And their goal was just to travel here, to be able to enjoy some peace and calm with nature. They knew that this location was so off the beaten track, it was unlikely anyone else would be here. And they knew that the journey here would all be worth it to have this sense of peace and calm. And as evening set in, so they enjoyed walking through the water on the edge of the shore. while admiring the night sky before settling down in their tent. And during the night, while they were drifting, between sleep and wakefulness, they could occasionally hear splashing in the sea. And the next day, they noticed that there were dolphins not that far away from the shore. And they were jumping and flipping and splashing and just swimming around and looking like they were playing. And this man had an inflatable boat with them. And they knew that the dolphins could be gone by the time they get into the water. But they couldn't rush blowing up that boat. So they took their time 
just watching those dolphins while they blew up that boat. Before carrying that boat down to the shore. Putting the boat on the water. Climbing into that boat. And with their hands they paddled out. Towards the dolphins. And the dolphins just seemed to be swimming around where they were. They didn't back away or try to move. They allowed the man to come all the way to where they were. And as that man approached where the dolphins were, he stopped paddling and just let his boat float, and it floated gently to that location, with that gentle sound of the water lapping on the underside of the boat, the sploshing sound of dolphins, occasionally reaching the surface with their heads catching a breath, and then disappearing beneath the water again. And for a moment, they didn't seem to be playing so much. They were being much calmer around the boat. And then, almost as if they had that sense that they had understood the boat now and how they can behave around it. Some of them started jumping out the water, flipping, splashing down. Jumping out the water, facing their back towards the water, and splashing down. And then one of the dolphins came over to the boat and swam right up to the front of the boat, rose its head out the boat, and seemed to rest its chin on the edge of the boat. The man leant forward and gently stroked that dolphin, and the dolphin slid back off the boat and under the water again. And the man sat back again, just watching, just enjoying the experience. And then again, that dolphin came up and rested its head there again, and this time let out a series of clicks in the direction of the man. And the man had this feeling like he could be aware of those clicks passing through his body. Almost as if those clicks had reverberated within him. And the dolphin let out another series of clicks. And there was something about the frequency of those clicks that resonated calmness and relaxation through his body. Almost a tingling from the top of his head down his shoulders all the way down to his hands, through his chest, his upper back, his lower back, his stomach, and all the way down into his legs, almost like a quick-fire series of gently massaging clicks or bubbles. And this man began to feel a sense of deep peace and relaxation. As that dolphin backed off again, went back into the water, and then after a while came back again, rested its head back where it was, and let out another series of clicks. And the man started having this weird sensation of being able to understand the dolphin. And then started to have this sense of 
almost images or a language through pictures in his mind. And then he began to understand those pictures as that dolphin continued to click. And the dolphin started to communicate with him that they're intelligent beings and that they had learned how to click with certain targeted frequencies to be able to trigger thoughts, ideas, and memories in the brains of other animals. And that that's what they're doing here. They're clicking in the direction of the person's head and triggering vibrations in the brain at specific frequencies in specific locations. That trigger visual imagery, sounds, feelings. It's almost like having an experience of language without words. And that the human brain will give its own language interpretation. Almost like the images triggered are an intermediate language between a language that the dolphin would use and a language that a human would use. And the man found himself incredibly still and focused and calm and found this experience profound. And as the dolphin beamed those vibrations into the brain of the man, so the man had this feeling almost like someone was tickling inside his head with the most calm and pleasant feeling. And the dolphin started sharing with the man about their way of life, about their perspective on the world, and how they see what happens and live their life. And the man feels this deep connection with the dolphin. but feels at a loss because they would love to be able to communicate back. And although the dolphin can communicate with them, they can't transmit clicks and can't communicate their language back to the dolphin. And the dolphin acknowledges this and can tell from the changes to the heart rate, from other changes they can detect, that this person was upset that they couldn't communicate back what they would like to communicate. And the dolphin explained that that's okay. Sometimes just being present and listening is enough. And after the experience, the dolphin backs off the boat and disappears back under the water. And then all the dolphins start to swim away with some occasionally jumping, twisting in the air, splashing down, as they move further and further away, before he finds himself 
just resting in that boat in silence with just the sound of the water lapping on the boat around him. And then with his hands, he begins to paddle back towards the shore. And when near the shore, he allows those waves to do the work for him of pushing that boat up onto the sand. And as it slides up on that sand, making that gravelly sliding sound, he climbs out the front of the boat, carries his boat up near his tent. And so that his boat won't fly away with any breeze, He starts letting the air out of that boat and just rests on the boat while thinking about the experience that he'd had and while trying to process all the mental imagery, auditory sensations, feelings that he'd had during that experience. Just leaning on that boat with the air hissing out of the boat. And it takes a while for all the air to leave that boat. And once all the air is out of the boat, he rolls that boat up, places that boat back in his car before heading back to the tent, relighting the fire, having himself something to eat, And just continuing to rest and enjoy this beach experience. But the whole time he's enjoying the experience, sometimes stopping and reading, sometimes just gazing off into space and listening to the surroundings, he finds a part of his mind frequently drawn to that connection with the dolphin and to try and process everything the dolphin had communicated. And then as the sun begins to set, he calms himself down into the tent, relaxes into a sleeping bag, listens to the sound of the breeze, blowing the sides of the tent. Sound of that. Sea rolling in and out. The rustling sound of the leaves. And he drifts and floats so peacefully and calmly asleep. And the next morning, he knows he's only going to spend this day here before setting off in the evening to begin his journey back home, where he'll spend a number of hours until gone midnight driving along that straight road. We'll pull over for the night and then spend the whole next day driving to get home. And so that day he wants to make the most of this day here at the beach. He heads down to the water. He feels how calm that water is. And his mind is still full of thoughts of that dolphin and that connection. As he rests himself on his back, just floating on that seawater. And while he just rests there floating, with that water not feeling hot, not feeling cold. 
and being a temperature that almost feels like there's no water touching him at all. And he rests there on his back, closes his eyes, lets his arms and legs float away from his body to help him to keep his balance on his back, his ears just under the water. He can feel himself gently bobbing up and down on that water. He can enjoy that weightless sensation of being on the water, feeling the warmth of the sun on his face, on his cheeks, the slight pinkish glow through his eyelids, and can hear the sounds through his ears of those distant dolphins, the distant sound of some whales. And he's curious about the experiences of these other animals, that they're obviously highly intelligent and can obviously, some of them, communicate with humans. But based on the way they are and the lives they lead, humans don't treat them as being as intelligent as they really are. And yet he's had this experience of a dolphin sharing what it's like to live as a dolphin, what their inner experience is, what their beliefs are, what they do with their days, what they do for fun, what they think about the world they inhabit, And as he rests there on his back, floating on the water, he wonders with the dolphins if things had been different, would have developed technology and perhaps been as advanced as humans. Or whether being advanced like humans is just a human measure of what is important because it's what's important to the humans, not necessarily what's important to a dolphin. And he just listens underwater with his ears while thinking about these things, while floating weightless on the sea. And then after floating there a while, he swims around in the sea, swimming up and down, almost like he's doing lengths in a swimming pool, just picking two points on the shore. But he uses his markers and he swims along from one point, turns around and swims back to the other, before leaving that water, heading up onto the shore, letting himself dry in the sun, And then as the evening sets in, he has one last meal at the campfire, notices that the sun is now beginning to set and finishes up just after the sun has set over the horizon, where there's still a red sky glowing, but no sun in the sky. He packs everything away, gets back in his car, and begins his journey home. And he drives for a number of hours, late into the night, into the early hours of the morning, where he then pulls over his car, sleeps the night in his car, has something to eat the next day and then continues his journey home. And towards the end of that day, he arrives home. He packs everything away, sorts everything out, 
and is so pleased to be able to settle down in his own bed after sleeping on the ground in a tent for a few days and sleeping in a car seat. And he settles down in his bed and really appreciates how comfortable and calming that bed is. And as he drifts to sleep, he reviews his experiences of the days that he's just had. And almost smiling in his mind at the connection that he had had with that dolphin. He drifted and floated and relaxed so peacefully, so comfortably asleep knowing he'll feel fully refreshed and revitalized in the morning, drifting and floating so peacefully, so comfortably asleep.